best dance party ever leads to being reborn. An LSD and ketamine trip report by Alice, posted to Earwid.org October 19th, 2012. I've been amping myself up for a really epic dance party with an out of town house and techno DJ at a local late night club for weeks. The day had finally come. My friend T had never done acid before, and I recommended her to take it with me this night because we would be in the company of friends and the party would be going on all night. At around 10pm, I took two tabs and she had one. We started to feel the giggles and the energy within our chest within around half an hour after, and that feeling prevailed with a hint of anxiousness for about another hour. We left for the party at around midnight, already feeling pretty high and getting a bit confused when leaving the house with regards to what to bring and where. The party itself was actually really dark, the only light coming from the large double projection behind the DJ table. The sound was good, maybe great, really deep bass and dynamic range. I was pretty excited to see where this night is going. I started to notice the visuals when I adjusted the darkness, mainly rainbow geometry, Persian-like patterns and after image effects from the projection screens. I felt the usual tightening of muscles, especially my legs and knees. I tried to dance it out, but after about 45 minutes, it's obvious that I have to change into sneakers. I decide to go home, which is very near, thankfully. On my way out of the dark club, I notice that it's hard to adjust to the light. Everything has a rainbow haze or aura around it, and people's skin is throbbing, and my own hands look transparent, like I can see the blood flowing through them. I run into a friend on my way out the door, and he asks if I'm alright, probably because I look very confused in the moment. To be honest, I'm just very sensitive at this time. Back at home, me and my friend decide that the acid is feeling very nice and that we would like some more. I'm feeling a little bored and I may as well take it up a notch, so I take another dose and she takes half and shares the other half with another friend, S. What if I can't get high anymore? Back in the club, the music is a bit boring and I'm waiting to get more into it. I talk with my friend who asked if I was okay earlier. I tell him that I'm not feeling right not happy at all. I say it may be because I'd been doing ketamine casually throughout the day. The night before all this, I had a serious panic attack and breakdown, confessing that I thought I had a dependence on K, and that I'd use it to get me through depression, although I was scared that it just made it worse. He assured me that the anxiety I was feeling would pass, and that the effects of LSD would outweigh any other residual sedative effects of ketamine. I had a fear that I'd done some damage to my mental chemistry and that psychedelics wouldn't have the same euphoric effect on me now. But I wanted to believe he was right. And just then, one of my favourite old school acid tracks, Jesus Loves the Acid by Ecstasy Club came on and decided to work it. I remembered a recent experience on acid when I learned that physical exercise promotes the intensity of the visual and bodily high when I was running through a forest. I began to jack very hard and whip my hair about. Kaleidoscopic ribbons flowed by my face and seemed to cascade through my body, and it was all very pleasurable. I realised it was really up to me to make the best of this trip. The club was very packed and there were many people with the clubbing drunk and obnoxious vibe, and I was feeling rather sensitive to this. Eventually, it seemed to clear out around 2.30, and I was just getting higher and higher. The rest of the night just got better. The music just got better, the people got looser, the air got sweet with sweat and weed smoke and the crowd was working it very serious, like very, very hard. The next two and a half hours, I danced like I was having sex, like the pleasure of movement was giving me life and the music was fueling my power. I could feel the air moving out of the speakers and the space between the bass and treble was thick with vibration still. I was picking up on a very interesting and trippy stereoscopic sound effect. I usually experience a heavy presence of reverb as an oral hallucination while on acid, but this was hard to define as a hallucination. I hoped it wasn't for the sake of the crowd, because it was so fucking cool. I did spend most of the evening enjoying my time solo, with friends coming up to me for brief periods and dancing with me. Tea came by later in the night, and I asked her how it was going. Oh, it's great. It's amazing. She looked nice and ripped eyes all huge and juicy. I asked if she was getting visuals, thinking she may have not taken enough, and wishing she could be seeing what I was seeing. Yes, loads, oh, it's incredible, she exclaimed. <sighs> so relieved I was. Man, I'm so happy for you. You're so lucky that it's such a perfect environment for your first time. And we danced ecstatically. When I went to the bathroom, it was very bright, 
and I realised how high I actually was. I could barely even see. Everything was vibrating in colour and pulsing in and out. I sat on the toilet and my skin just pulsed. I focused on myself in the mirror and danced with myself. There was a very distinct delay in my reflection, and it was very convincing and amusing to do this. I usually freak myself out when looking in the mirror on drugs, but I felt very attractive this time. My hair had been wet with sweat and then kind of dried in motion in lovely ringlets which cascaded in harmony with the frame of my face and shoulders. I look like a fairy, I thought to myself. The most natural way I can look is the most lovely. This gave me the confidence to get back onto the dance floor and really start working it. It was during some intensely sexy and housey tracks that this great epiphany came to me. I've always been very in love with the nostalgia of the early rave era of the 80s. The politics, the music, the drugs, the sheer massiveness of it, the unity and the revolutionary movement it had. All the cliches are true. I was having such a great time, I wanted to share it with someone else who looked like they would appreciate it. I saw some guy that I recognised from similar events in the past. I asked if he had ever took acid at a dance party. He said he did once, but didn't seem that excited about it. I told him that I was really high, and that it was great. He reminded me that acid was a party drug before ecstasy. I told him that the harder I moved, the more I tripped out, and he laughed along happily. And at this moment, jacking hard with my community of dance heads and good folks, I felt like I was truly a part of that movement, that it had transcended time. This really was the best party ever. Nearing the end of the night, after craving weed and smelling the sticky sweet aroma cloud of the club all night, I smoked a couple of tokes of weed with my friends. It felt great, and intensified the visuals a bit too, which I really did enjoy. But overall though, in hindsight, it didn't feel as though it was an overly significant contribution to the trip though. The last track ended with the whole club cheering and demanding an encore, which would have been a bit inappropriate considering that the whole night was a singular, infectious groove and another track would have had to be selected for the purpose of an encore, and I don't think that was expected. At around 5am, the lights began to flash on and off, and soon enough, the night was over. Right now, everyone looks so hot and sexy. Like they had participated in possibly the biggest ever orgy imaginable. Not like the usual, after a long night of partying on E. As we exited the club onto the streets, we were shocked at what lay right in front of us. At first, I thought I was looking at a convertible parked on the wrong side of the road. Then I began to see that it was a car that had the roof ripped off. It was in pieces. The trunk crumpled, the hood crumpled, the airbags out. The whole block in front of the club was taped off, and cops and firemen were dealing with this aftermath. To me, it honestly looked fake. The lights were bright, and the street glittered with glass and colour reflected in the wet pavement. I felt guilty to see such destruction as beauty. There was a street sweeper up the block with its rear wheel blown off and the rim all bent. The car must have rammed it, rolled, and tore up in turbulence. Oh fuck, the driver must be dead. I had this cosmic feeling that some destruction must happen in order for beauty to take its place. I know, I know, that is kind of insensitive. But you know what? People do die all the time. It's just odd that it happened right then, and right there. At home, it was obvious that me and my girlfriends were very high and were not going to get to sleep anytime soon. I think I may have never been this high on acid ever before. It was in full force even after seven hours of the first dose. I had some ketamine, and I was suddenly very excited to take some in combination with the acid right now. And then, then the magic really happened. I don't think I could have predicted what was to come. There are several factors in place that I believe contributed to the intensity of the next 30 minutes. My room is a tripper's playground. i would taken lots of K in it and made it very comfortable to do so. I'd taken Foxy once, and made some videos of myself with photo booth on my computer with my mirror right across from it, where I was actually convinced I was living in a fractal. I've also had some incredible experiences on acid in combination with medicinal nitrous oxide in copious amounts, which honestly led me to believe I'd seen death or nirvana. I told my friends I was going to take some K and if they wanted some, to which they declined. In about three minutes after taking a line of about 50 milligrams, I lost all strength and fell onto my knees. The sedation was taking a hold very strongly, more than usual. 
In about five minutes, I saw my hands shrink into children's hands. I've never experienced micropsia before, but I'd read about it in K-trips. It was 100% convincing. Then, my hand stretched out before me, and my room looked all distorted. The whole time I was relaying the effects to S, who was highly amused as she usually is with my drug experiences, I stand up and decide to document the happening with photo booth. I look over at her, across from me, sitting on my bed in the corner of the room. The corner where the walls meet becomes a new space, infinitely deep, yet still retaining the edges, and the closeness of S remains as well, even though the space feels vast. I usually have the sense of the ceiling rising or myself sinking when lying down on K, but this was way, way beyond that. I take another line, losing even more strength again this time but I do manage to get up and look into the computer screen. It is very hard to make out what is what though. I can see myself, but I'm not really identifying with it. I do know that full well this is me, but honestly, it's like seeing myself in a dream and trying to remember what I look like, as opposed to recognising my reflection instantly. The mirror, well, that is there in the screen too, but I find that the music stops, and Esk begins to ask what's going on, specifically with me. I ask if the music has stopped. She puts her ear to the speaker. Nah, it's still on, she says. Listen. I put my ear to the speaker and there is another dimension in there. To be honest, I really cannot tell if I'm actually hallucinating or not. It's pretty real right now. She convinces me that it is there. It may be of importance to add that I found it very difficult to remember an artist and figure out how to play a DJ mix by the artist, something that is easy to do usually. But to be honest, right now I couldn't really spell and his name was coming out all wrong. Finally, I was able to remember, told S and she figured it out. She says she has to go to the bathroom and leaves. What happens now though? <laughs> that is really incredible. It is hard to remember in images what happened because of how synesthetic the whole experience was. It would be incorrect to say that I saw or heard or felt anything. It was more unified than that. What I experienced, anyway, was what I can only describe simply as travelling into myself. I was looking into the computer, and any barriers that it had sort of dissolved into a space through which I could travel. I faced myself and went in. I then look away, toward the door, wobbly at best, and begin to go through it. It really felt like entering another world. I saw my roommate P, and he looked at me in sheer amazement. My face must have said it all. I felt enlightened though. I felt pure. I felt like I was even touched by God. What I could see was so intensely psychedelic, I believed anything was possible, like walking through walls or something. I feel the sudden desire to pick up my hula hoop. Not completely convinced I had the motor ability to do it though. I usually don't do anything like this on K, but I always try anyways. I began to hula hoop smoothly, which was really something remarkable. A visual field separated in horizontal slices, which then rotated independent of each other as I spun around with the hoop. The hoop itself extended far, far out and became huge and wide around me. Pfft, I was flabbergasted by now. Ketamine has given me some intense visual distortions and I've tried many incremental dosages, but the acid must have had some added clarity that the K alone cannot offer. I stopped and my visual field slowly circled back and came together somewhat. I stood there, jaw dropped, and tried to describe to P what I was seeing, but he was just laughing. Suddenly, I remembered a time when I had a weather balloon, and how trippy it was to bounce it when sober. I ran to my room to get a three foot balloon I'd stashed. It was very confusing to find anything. But after a while, I found a smaller, clear balloon, and it was very beautiful to look into it, and the sound was interesting as well. But it was clear that the K was wearing off, and I should redose. I went to my computer again to document another segment of the trip, knowing that it would be difficult to remember all of this. Although, I must say, that unfortunately, I just kept starting it and stopping it, and I did feel as if I lost some valuable insights that I had during this whole process. Wormhole and Singularity I managed to put on a video by Matthew Barney that is very trippy, and I thought S would enjoy it and may stimulate me as well. I put it on, and proceeded to cut up another two lines of K, Maybe more like 120 milligrams total this time. 
I took a line and very shortly afterward fell to my knees and decided to lay down on the ground. S asked what was up and I just remember saying that it was the essence of synesthesia, pure bliss. I managed to get onto my bed, looked down at the screen and the image became a real fractal. I felt like I was in there, spiralling into infinity with the giant black dick that was part of the movie. I then had the sense to lay down beside S because I knew that the K would paralyse me and I would be more comfortable this way. Looking at the ceiling, I could hear the familiar sounds of machinery and lubrication from the movie, but the visual field warped into these sounds. I had the most convincing sense that the sounds created the images that I was seeing, that they were one and the same. And then, wouldn't you know it, my body dissolved and I became one with it as well. Up until this point, I was doing a pretty good job at transcribing all of this to S. The last thing I described was a dark point I could see on the ceiling that looked real. Then I found myself going too deep into it, and it was rather difficult or maybe even impossible to speak during this moment. All of this, I must say though, was familiar to my previous experiences with Kay, but I must say that it was so much more vivid and intense and clear than I had ever known it to be. The ceiling, it had these dimensions to it that were moving slowly and warping tubularly. The space here was very, very deep as well. I did not move my head, and I don't even think I could. Didn't even move my body either. There was just no way to try. Now, I definitely have experienced this sensation before. S told me that it is the ketamine blocking the brain's ability to sense the body. That it cannot read the body or tell it what to do. Soon enough, the tubular landscape turned into one tunnel, and the hole at the end opened up to an image as I focused on it. It was a pool party with men's bums in speedos. What a very bizarre thing to see. There was a little circle, like a movie screen, and then around it was a tube that reflected that screen, like a viewfinder, or like looking through a kaleidoscope. This tubular vision was separate from a knowledge of self. It was as if I did not exist. I remember in that moment that I desperately wanted to tell S that I had become my environment through focusing on it. But really, nothing could come out. Maybe for some time, I did not even think. Two main past events have informed my ideas of what this tube could be. I'd taken acid with medicinal nitrous oxide before and experienced what I thought was death. Now, it wasn't scary. It was in fact the most pleasurable experience I've ever had. It was the freedom of body and the bareness of consciousness. Apart from memories and real thoughts, it was the most now feeling I ever knew. Just pure bliss. I could identify with that experience now quite a bit, to be honest. The loss of time and memories and body were similar, but the nitrous was more explosive, but like an orgasm, while the K was more gradually sensual and contemplative until the singular point. The other thing that I could relate to is a video that my friend R made of a black hole. R studies physics and computer science and had used some software to program a visual simulation that mathematically represents a black hole. It honestly made me cry the first time I saw it because I was so sure I'd seen it on nitrous oxide before. He also showed me images manipulated with the algorithms of wormholes leading from one place to another and they look very much like what I'd just seen on K. What does this mean? Did I really see a wormhole? I mean, is that even possible? Is it possible to travel through it if I had let go? I started to think, would I be able to leave my body once my mind had detached from it? When I was able to move again, I told S that I think I had experienced Nirvana itself, and she was happy for me. I don't actually know if this is what I would experienced, but the pleasure of letting go was so rich, it was honestly like being reborn. We were hungry, and we left my room to make a snack. After that, I sat down to think more about what honestly just happened. It was extremely difficult to sum it all up and relay back to S. I recall spurting out, memories make things real. And she honestly seemed to understand what I was saying. She said she had a conversation about such a concept recently. I was thinking about the night before when anxiety took over me and I was trapped within my negative thoughts and ruminating on happenings of the past and fearing the future. When, in contrast, it made sense to me that when free from memories and bodily sensation, one is actually free, and that it made sense that this state was nirvana-like. But, that it was also very real. 
it was in that moment that I honestly felt that it really is possible to transcend this waking reality by letting go of the self or the ego that is attached with memories. Another important aspect of the night is the power of dance. I really feel like I danced away the blues. Well, I do love cliches. I do not think that the following trips would have happened on a clouded or negative consciousness, and that by dancing for many hours I was actually able to move the bad feelings and thoughts out and away from me and fill myself with positive energy. When I travelled inside of myself, I came out feeling like a newborn baby. I was vibrating with joy and rainbows. This was evidence that my mind was clear and free from the demons of the previous night. I'm writing this largely due to the therapeutic aspect of the evening, and I really hope to retain most of what I was able to learn here. Well, this isn't the first time I've had a rebirth-like experience from taking LSD, and I haven't felt this good since the first acid nitrous trip a year and a half ago. In conclusion to that thought, it may be that I have to become deeply buried in worry over time to be able to feel so cleansed after the release. Hopefully it won't be so soon until this has to happen again, but at least I know it is possible to be cleansed. I was able to relay to S another concept that I felt very strongly for her as well. That in order for something to exist, it must have a binary. I was trying to grasp the idea that without a sense of my surrounding world, I began to disappear, or at least my body did. There was no inside versus outside of me. As my physical appearance and body is the outside and my thoughts or consciousness are the inside, this was honestly quite irrelevant in the moment. All the things about duality I've ever learned had significance in a new way. Yin and yang, good and evil, life and death. I feel now that my understanding of life is death. It is the experience of leaving the bodily dimension and entering a new and endless dimension of nowness, infinity. This death is different from the death that we on Earth see when a relative passes away from us. The essence of life seems to lie within this balance of black or white or what have you. I only think this because, well, I have had similar experiences to relate this one to, and because enough time has passed since then, and I've had a lot of time to think about it. I can feel this sure about how I feel now. I honestly cannot wait to try it all again and learn even more. After Effects the sun was coming up at around 7 or so, and S went home. I took a couple of tablets of melatonin and hoped it would help me sleep. I was honestly exhausted. My body was strained from dancing, and my head felt tight. Luckily though, I was able to fall asleep quite easily. When I woke up about 6 or so hours later, I felt crusty stuff on my face. I thought it was snot from the K that had dried, but was shocked to discover that it was blood. I had quite the nosebleed going on. My nose was clogged with blood and snot. I even felt a bit faint and nauseous. I laid down and my nose began to bleed. and bled lightly for a while, maybe even a few hours. I mean, it goes without saying that I can definitely attribute this to the K, as I don't think I've ever had a nosebleed before. I don't think I've ever done so much K in one 24-hour period. It was about half a gram. Uh, I wasn't worried though. T and I had some friends who were also at the dance party. We went and got lunch and took it to the park. Oh, it was such a beautiful day, and although I was totally wiped, I felt amazing. I went to sleep at 6pm and slept until 10am. Now, I honestly feel fine, and my nose is as clear as ever. I enjoy taking ketamine with LSD. If you enjoy either drug, they seem to complement each other in a very interesting and complicated way. I enjoy the introspective aspects of K, and the LSD allowed me to go deeper and remember the experience more vividly. If you like the beauty and visual elements of LSD, K certainly takes them to the very next level.